Hi everyone, I'm so excited for today's video. I'm going to just be sharing it in such a mix that I've been coming up most of this morning, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to try to make the video quick because I have breakfast in the oven, so here we go. Okay, so... I was looking over the story of um, the Israelites, and um, it was amazing because I, I was looking back at all the Israelites, what they had been through, and um, I realized that um, through, you know, the Holy Spirit um, revealing this to me, that um, it's amazing because the Israelites, they were already going to reach the promised land. Now, we know from the story they didn't, right? <laughs> part of me believes that promise land, the land flowing with milk and honey, part of what it was was this spiritual rest. God was repeatedly telling the Israelites to set aside a day of Sabbath. And we know this is ultimately pointing to Christ and foreshadowing him. But what I was finding was so amazing was um, this insight, okay? And you can apply it to your own life if you have been trying to reach a certain point in your life that you feel like the enemy has been battling you from reaching. The Israelites did not receive the rest that God was giving them, commanding them. There's even a verse, it's in Jeremiah, I think it's in Jeremiah, and it says, possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. It doesn't say, is going to give you or will give you. It says, hath, has given you. And I find it really amazing how the Israelites, they didn't then turn to the promised land. Why? Because of unbelief, it says in Hebrews. They were looking at the law. They were looking at themselves. That's why God keeps commanding them set aside a day of Sabbath where they will do no work because he's trying to take their eyes off the law and off themselves. And what I find so amazing is God had already brought them through so much. He had already done unfathomable miracles. They, they had already seen his mighty hand perform these wonders in Egypt. And not just that, but bringing them out from the bondage and freeing them from the slavery of the Egyptians, and not just bringing them out of that captivity, but literally when their very enemies were chasing after them, and their hearts were gripped with fear and panic, and completely overwhelmed. None of that could stop. God's mighty hand not only from safely bringing them through but literally defeating their enemies till they were no more you know Moses said stand still and you shall see the salvation of the Lord and you shall hold your peace they could just be still because of who God is and who he had been the one who had been fighting their enemies every battle and what i find so amazing you know god had provided for them time and time again he was the cloud by day the pillar of fire by night going before them leading them guiding them at every step of the way no matter what it looked like no matter what the circumstance looked like and what i find so amazing is not only this spiritual rest of God trying to take their eyes off the law, but within the story, how God was trying to get them to rest in his provision, in his power, in his strength, in his grace. 
that was sufficient. And I find it so amazing because this morning, God was reminding me of this. The Israelites, it's like they were already going to reach the promised land. That land was already theirs. It had already been given to them, essentially. Do you understand what I mean? When I, I mentioned that verse, you know, possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. All the Israelites had to do was rest. They could cease from their striving. They didn't have to figure out how they were going to reach that promised land. They could just rest in God. And so when we see verses like, you know, my presence will um, go with you and give you rest. It's amazing because it's really reminders of all of that. And this place of rest, God was trying to lead them to. And I hope you don't get it twisted what I'm saying when I say that, you know, the land was already theirs. Or when I say, you know, um, they were already going to reach that promised land. We know from the story they didn't. But do you understand what I mean? If they would have rested, receive that rest God was giving them. They could just rest. God was the one leading and guiding them. God was the one who was fighting every battle and had fought everyone for them. They could just rest. But they didn't. Instead, we see them doing the opposite. But I find it so amazing. And I know we're not always taught about the story that is right in half day. For some of us, there's a promise land that, you know, we may be trying to get to in our lives that the enemy's been fighting tooth and nail and, and we wonder how are we going to reach it? How are we going to fulfill this? Or, or even how are we going to be okay in the midst of the circumstances or situations we may be going through? And, it reminds me, as God reminds me all the time, and, and it seems so contradictory and opposite to what we would think things would be, not only in Christianity, but just the way they're set up kind of within our world and our society. But it reminds me that we can just rest. We can rest in God. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, this place of rest, it's actually the place that the enemy tries to keep us from getting to um, understanding spiritually. That's actually the enemy that tries to not get us to rest in God and to not get us into that place of rest spiritually. Believe it or not, it's not God that wants us to be in all this striving and trying to figure things out and being in this worry and anxiety and fear. <laughs> I know it can feel like we have more control over certain things that may happen or over the outcome, but it's actually the enemy that wants to get us into that place. Because when we're resting, there's a peace that we can know, almost like um, Moses said, you know, stand still. And what I'm reminded of when I see those words is, is we can be still because of who. Our God is. He is sustaining us through everything. He is leading and guiding us. He goes before us. And not just that, but his spirit literally dwells in our hearts every day of our life. But it reminds me, you know, when Moses says, Stand still and ye shall see the salvation of the Lord, and ye shall hold your peace. God wants us to know we can hold our peace. And not just hold our peace, but we can rest in who he is and who he has been. You know, Jesus says, behold. And what's amazing 
is this is in the chapter of Matthew 7, I believe, that says on the headline, do not worry. And there's a verse in there that says, behold, the fowls of the air neither reap nor sow nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. It literally alludes to this rest. God wants us to be in a place of rest. It's exhausting being in worry, being in anxiety, trying to figure things out, wondering how certain things will happen. Striving. The enemy doesn't want you in a place of rest because he knows when you rest in God, it's kind of over. <laughs> you're not resting in your own ability. You're not resting in what the circumstance may look like. You're resting in who your God is and that he has been the one sustaining you through everything. And that's so, so, so powerful. But as God was reminding me of the story of the Israelites, I just was really amazed <clears throat> as I was looking at it. And I was like, wow, wait a minute. You were trying to lead them to the promised land. You were leading them and guiding them and providing them every for them every step of the way. They were going to already reach the promised land. Had they rested and ultimately been in faith and not unbelief. Because there's a lot of symbolism and foreshadowing within the story that ultimately foreshadows Jesus. But, and this is what I love about the Bible, is that there's many other lessons we can see in this story in addition to the foreshadowing and symbolism of Christ. We can look and see how God was trying to get them to rest repeatedly. Imagine that. God was trying to get them to rest. To rest. Isn't that beautiful? That we can just rest. It's the opposite of what we're taught within our society and world. You know, we're taught the more we strive, the more we push, the more we'll make certain things happen. And maybe that is true to some extent, spiritually, to some capacity. There comes a point where you know, things are beyond what we can do. Or there comes a point where you feel like you run yourself to the ground and you want to experience this rest that God talks about all throughout the Bible. And as scary as it may seem, you want to know and learn what it means to rest in Him. And I'm telling you, this concept change my life and God had ministered that to me that if I understood rest that it would just change my life and he was so 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 right but I didn't know spiritually how it changed my life that it's literally the place the enemy tries to keep us from getting to because there's peace found there And then we see this powerful example in the story of the Israelites illustrated for us where, my goodness, the Israelites, you know, 
God, do you understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand what I'm saying. God was leading and guiding them every step of the way, no matter what it looked like. They were already going to reach the promised land. God is trying to get them to rest. He was taking care of them. He had brought them through all these things. Sorry, here, that's my stomach. He was taking care of them. And yes, I want you to look at your life too. As I speak this, God was trying to get them to rest. He was leading them and guiding them every step of the way. No matter what they felt, no matter what things looked like physically, no matter what seemed like the truth, And guys, even when they grumbled and complained, God was constantly providing for them. And I say that to say that he still provided for them even though they had those responses. Even when we don't recognize the blessings God has, has given or the way he has provided, his love is still constant. And it doesn't change the provision that he wants to give or how he still is the one leading and guiding us in our lives and never leaves us nor forsakes us. <laughs> but I find it really amazing God was leading them, guiding them at every step of the way through everything they had been through. Performing these unfathomable miracles. They were already going to reach the promised land. God was the one leading and guiding them. God was the one going before them. And similar in our lives, Basically, do you need to take a bath or a shower? No. Okay. <laughs> Similar in our lives, when we're trying to reach a certain place in our lives, perhaps a promised land, perhaps a, a promise God has um, spoken over us or something the enemy has been trying to um, fight us tooth and nail from getting to or receiving um that we know is um, what God has um, shown us or ministered to us, or is in his word. I want you to make this connection. You know, the Israelites, had they rested, had they known that they could just be still and know that he is and had been God, the one leading and guiding them every step of the way through everything. And that he wanted them to rest. They were going to reach the promised land. No matter what it looked like. No matter what they felt. And I want you to understand that in your life too. He is leading and guiding us every step of the way. to that promise, the fulfillment of it, or to that promised land, or to a certain place in our life of healing or restoration from the things the enemy has tried to destroy. But God wants us to rest in him, to know we can hold our peace. For us not to rack our brains trying to wonder how are, how are we going to do this? How are we going to figure all this out? How can this happen? 
but to look to him and to rest in him. Who he is and who he has been. The one going before us at every step and is letting guide us through everything we've been through, through the very times we didn't think we could get through. And has never left our side. I want you to kind of understand the parallel to our lives when I um, brought up the story of the Israelites. Because God was ministering not to me, and I just was like, wow. Wow. I want this video to be a reminder that um, not only can we rest, but God wants us to rest. To believe he's taking care of us. That he is fighting that battle. That he is the one that is going to bring us to that promised land or to see with our own eyes the fulfillment of his promises he has spoken over his life or that are in his word. That we can just be still and know that he is God. That we can hold our peace. And sometimes just to be able to know that is so huge because of the peace we can have in the moment instead of us living in stress, living in fear and anxiety. But knowing we can rest in the peace of who God is and His infinite strength and faithfulness. And this verse keeps coming up, so I'm going to share it because I feel like it can have multiple meanings. And it's the verse Jesus says, and he says, come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Yes, I believe when it talks about laboring, it's talking about how we cease from our works when it comes to salvation. No amount of good works can save us. But I also believe it's amazing because this verse, I feel like, can also have this multi dimensional meaning where we can cease from our works and striving and receive the rest that only comes from Him. To believe he is taking care of us. He is going on behalf of us. He is fighting for us. And he is leading and guiding us every step of our lives that we can rest in who he is. This verse is coming up, so I'm going to share it. I know people might not agree with 
how I'm using it, but this was another insight that came up from God one day for me. But the verse from Psalm 23 is coming up. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want this video to be a reminder that he is the God that is taking care of us too. Not just to only believe that eternally he's taking care of us, but that he is and wants to in our lives as well. That he is going before us. He is leading and guiding us every step of the way. Fighting every battle. That we don't have to fear or worry or be afraid. That we can hold our peace we can be still and rest in him. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video ministers to you. Um, God bless you.